<laughs> this feels so real. Well, after watching so many Wait. YouTube videos. Hello and welcome back to Study with Aditi. My name is Aditi and this channel is dedicated to revision tips and tricks, along with much more, to help make your schooling life a whole lot easier. And today I'm here with a very special guest named Ayo. Ayo, that's right, isn't it? I feel like Ayo. I should go with Ayo. Sand. Anyway, today we're going to be doing a video on math and how to revise math. So as usual, we have a few notes with us. So if we look down at any point during this video, that's why. Firstly, we're just going to be talking about some general tips for revising math, and then we'll go into specifics for GCSE and A level a bit later in the video. So I'd say the most important thing for maths, unlike some of the other subjects, is to practice it and practice it and practice it because it's not... Mm. You're going to be answering similar questions every time with every exam paper, so understanding the questions and how to answer them is really helpful. So I'd say do practice papers, do practice questions, any questions you can for every subject, part of it. <laughs> Under exam conditions as yeah, well. Like, that's really important. There's no point of doing it if it's not under exam conditions. Don't just look at the answer and not actually figure out how they got the answer. Like, exactly. That's not helping you. Also try and get them marked, either using a mark scheme or asking a teacher to mark it because that's going to be really beneficial to you in looking at where you want to go back and see where you've made mistakes and where to improve basically. Um, if you don't understand any questions, try and, again, ask a teacher to help you. If you're going to make notes, you should make, like, flashcards for the equations and the formula because, like, that's where you can actually get marks in questions. Just from writing down formula, you can get at least one or two marks, which is, like, the difference between grade boundaries. Or even if you, like, don't want to write them out, you could use Quizlet. Hmm. That's what I use. Quizlet, just make flashcards. I'm more memorised, but, yeah. you know. <laughs> if you have a really bad teacher, or... <laughs> in it, though. If you have a really bad teacher, or um, you just don't understand their method of teaching, try and go on YouTube and search for people like Corbett Maths, Primrose Kitten does a few good mm. things, and Khan Academy as well. And they explain the concepts really well. Khan Academy is steered towards more like American education, mm. but I think it can still help. And also, you don't have to necessarily go to the big name YouTubers. There are lots of small name YouTubers as well, and they're just as good really. Because it's really important to understand concepts in maths. So that like, even if the question is phrased differently from how you usually see it, you can still answer the question because you understand what it's actually asking mm -hmm. you. There are also quite a few websites where you can get like practice questions from, so like Physics and Maths Tutor, mm. or what, what are some other ones? Well there's Miss B resources, but I used her for predicted papers. So basically a predicted paper is where they, after paper one, say of the real thing, they'll, people will look at the topics that have come up and they'll make a paper with different questions based on the topics that haven't come up yet because if you don't already know, in paper one, two and three of GCSE, um, there's not like set topics which come up in each, it's just anything could come up in any of those. There's also Maths Genie and I think that's quite good as well. Don't mess around in lessons and don't copy answers. Don't copy your friend's homework. Like, actually do it yourself to understand how it works yeah. and to help practice as well, which is really important. I lost probably so many marks in my GCSE exam because I didn't finish the questions. If you can't answer a question, just move on. Don't waste your mm -hmm. time trying to think, like, how I can answer that question because you're losing marks, easy marks that you yeah. can get with a different question that you understand. And try your best to answer the question. Like even if you're like, I don't know what this is, like write down the formula um, and plug in numbers, stuff like that. For GCSE Maths, I did it in Excel and they give you like a huge box of area to write down your answer in. And for me, because I'm really messy when I answer questions, I just wrote down my calculations in random places. So when I went back, I didn't know what I was doing. So when you're actually answering questions, make sure it's in the right format so you and your examiner can actually look back at what you've done to check for mistakes. They're not really here to help you, they're here to mark the paper. Exactly. So. They're not going to be looking 
for your answer you kind of have to make it obvious mm. so um firstly like that problem isn't a big thing with AQA because they give you lines so you can structure your answer a bit more I've always been taught to circle or box my answers mm -hmm. or any sub answers that I get during the actual main thing because that way the examiner can easily see what your answer is basically and at the end of your exams like actually check through your answers I mean I hate doing that myself it's, it's but, pretty boring yeah but you have to because silly mistakes are gonna cost you marks mm -hmm. like I remember for one of my physics marks one of the papers I mean it's physics not maths but whilst I was checking through I found a mistake and I managed to correct that before I gave in my paper I managed to get a few more marks in that way checking through is beneficial even though it can take time and mm. it's boring yeah <laughs> the equipment that you actually use like a compass and a protractor you really need to know how to actually use Honestly. that don't go to the exam not knowing how to use your compass make sure you take the right compass because sometimes in those math sets you get like a weird two-pointed compass thing and if I, yeah you know those like it hasn't got a space for a pencil it's just like one point and then another oh. point. It's weird. Make so make sure you take the right one. You actually screwed if you bring that in. <laughs> like even like clearing um, the memory on your calculator because that's what I yeah. do before exams yeah. to make sure it's in the right. I mode. did it like three times. Yeah, just like you know <laughs> to make sure. To make like, sure. Because I remember one of my friends for mocks, she um, her calculator was in the wrong mode and she lost so many marks for that. Mm. So. But at least it was for mocks and not the yeah, real thing. Exactly. So I mean, learn, she learned her lesson that way. That's a that's actually a good point. Use your mocks. Like, your mocks are important. Hmm. Look at what you did in your mocks, what lost you marks, what gave you marks, and apply that to your actual GCSEs. They're and important, yeah. make sure you revise for mocks. If you don't revise for your mocks, then you can't, in the end, use your mocks to see where you should improve. With my mocks, I was able to apply to different schools, so they're really important for showing school other schools that you might want to go to. Yeah, for like Your abilities, and stuff. yeah, because like they're not... They're not just mocks, they're really important, so I actually revise mm -hmm. for them. Isn't it that, like, if you're ill for your GCSEs or something, like, properly ill, then they use your mock results or something? I think people said that, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't know. But it's yeah, like, if people are grade. saying it, it might be true, so just, like, yeah. listen to other people. It's either predicted grades or mocks. I don't know, but I mean, to be honest, you should do well in your mocks anyway. <laughs> Even if you don't do well in your mocks, that's not the end of the world because they are your mocks, not mm -hmm. the real thing. So that if you should use that as like a stepping stone. I don't know what's the yeah. Right yeah. In exams, make sure you make sure you're actually putting units. So like, don't just put thirteen. Thirteen what? Like your teacher needs to understand what you're actually writing down. If they give the units, that's a different story. But mm. if they don't, make sure you have it in there. Because if they don't give you some sort of unit in the question, um, in your answer. Say it was for area, put like 13 units squared. So you've still you've still acknowledged that there should be units there, but that's they just haven't been given. Level. That's practice for A level as well, because that's important for A level. Units are really important, so. Now we're gonna give specific tips to GCSE. If you can, if your school offers it for you at least, take further maths because it's really helpful for A level. If your school offers any like maths related stuff <laughs> yeah like um what was it junior maths challenge and uh, intermediate maths challenge yeah try doing it like just give it a go because maths gcse is a lot of problem solving and mm. they tend to focus around that yeah try and do maths related things that aren't necessarily available to everyone so like if they give you locked practice papers mm. that you wouldn't be able to get at home try and do those as well yeah and do your best in those because that's yeah. the only time you're really gonna Honestly. see it. this is kind of relating to a level maths but if you're planning to do a level maths at sixth form or college or whatever then try and take further maths gcse if you can if you can't manage it then that's okay the yeah people who did further maths of the class are like oh yeah we did this last year you and know the people who didn't are like what for like, example, like differentiation. What was that? Oh my god. And it was so easy, but I didn't know what it was. Exactly. So. And the teachers, I don't know, they just kind of assumed that we knew. Exactly. But the people that did further math did know. Yeah. So they did so much better. Mm -hmm. I made the mistake that thinking at A level I'd have more time to dedicate to maths. <laughs> and I can say 
but that's definitely that's not, not true. true. <laughs> yeah. So to be honest, if you take further maths or GCSE, it's just going to be the same workload mm -hmm. as at A level, just doing maths. So, I mean, like you might as well do it at GCSE if you're interested in maths. So now we're going to move on to A-level specific tips. So I feel like the A-level course is more conceptual, as in GCSE math is, again, more problem solving, but at A-level it's kind of like, oh yeah, here's a concept, here are all the questions around it. You don't necessarily mix up topics that much from what we've seen over the past few months. Yeah. Um, one tip is to revise GCSE stuff beforehand, preferably in the summer before you start mm you start A-level math. I mean we did some GCSE stuff in September I think but if your school doesn't do that then you've missed out on it. Mm. A-level is like I don't know for us it started off with going over GCSE concepts and it just really helps to actually understand and remember stuff from GCSE yeah. to help you with A-level yeah. stuff because for A-levels they're literally just building on GCSEs and then building on the A-level stuff they already taught you throughout the course. Exactly. So for some of us, we got through GCSEs for, off our own talent. Like, we didn't really have to revise for some subjects. Yeah. They just kind of came to us naturally. Just happened. Yeah, A-levels isn't like that. You actually need to do work. A really good grade at GCSE isn't necessarily a good grade at A-level. Oh, yeah. That's like, true. I think for math, for my subjects, I felt it the most. You're basically battling it out with other 7s, 8s and 9s. So even if you got like a high grade of a 7 like for GCSE, you're now kind of at the lowest point compared to everyone else. Mm -hmm. Kind of think of A-level as the stepping stone to university. So like think how hard university is and then compare that to GCSE. There has to be a jump for A-level because otherwise you're just not going to get to that university level mm -hmm. if you chose to do math. Well, to be honest, this is for any subject, really. Like, there's going to have to be... It's going to have to get harder in order to get to university level. Try and use resources that your school recommends because the school obviously has experience in yeah. teaching that subject for that exam board. So any resources they give is, like, they're crucial to helping you excel. I mean, otherwise you can find stuff, again, as we yeah. mentioned before, like YouTube and stuff like that. One good thing about A-level maths is that it kind of exposes you to more maths, if that makes sense. Like, there's pure maths, mechanics and statistics, and it's just a lot more different from GCSE. Yeah, maths, GCSE is kind of like everything yeah. you put in one. And but this one, um, for A-levels, it's kind of split out. Yeah, so here's the mechanics textbook. This is for the old spec, but it's still really useful. And I have mm. the statistics one and a pure maths one as well. But there's also the CGP blue book, which is just a textbook for A-level math. At GCSE, we had the maroon reddish one. And I think that also comes with an online version as well. So that's quite good if your school does give that to you. Or you can just buy it yourself, although it may be a bit on the expensive side. The good thing about exposing you to a lot more different types of maths is that if you did want to do maths at university, you kind of you you get a taste of what each type of maths is like yeah. and what you may want to go into in the future. Because mm, mechanics is basically physics, because mm. I take physics and it made it so much easier. If you don't already know, this video is part of a series called the How to Revise a Certain Subject series. If you have any requests for any subjects at all, please comment down below and I'll see what I can do. If you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon while you're at it. Thank you once again for watching and goodbye. Say bye. bye. <laughs>